And moving from history to the future, which the future. actually yep. the future is actually here. You know, we've talked about the Internet of Things on the show before, and the Internet of Things, for those of you who aren't hip uh, or IoT, it's all about those billions of devices out there like, uh, I don't know, your toaster, that are in fact connected to the Internet and reporting information back to the manufacturer. In an article this week by Stan Presbolinsky, Experiencing the Quality of the Internet of Things, Pres Presbolinsky points out that by 2020, about 50 billion devices 50 billion, that's with a B, will be connected to the internet and more than a trillion sensors. Wow. That's a lot. So <laughs> what does that mean for users and for manufacturers? Well, we have Stan Presbolinski with Sim Data uh, with us via Skype to tell us all about it. Stan, how's it going this morning? Good, how are you doing, guys? Oh, pretty good. Doing well, first good. off, uh, really, quick, uh, really quickly, what does Sim Data do and how are you guys connected to the Internet of Things topic? Uh, SimData is a global strategic management consulting and market research firm that focuses on the product lifecycle management industry. Uh, product lifecycle management is really about the set of tools and services that support product development. And a lot of the IoT stuff is talking about making products smart. Okay, well, let's talk about that a little bit. So, um, you have all of these connected sensors, a trillion is kind of the estimate, or a trillion by 2020. And uh, what are the manufacturers trying to accomplish? I mean, it's the manufacturers that are embedding uh, this capability, the capability of products, I guess, to connect to the internet. What are they looking to get it out of it? Uh, what's in it for them? Well, one of the trends that is supported by uh, the internet of things is what some people call product as a service or productization. Uh, it's been around actually for a long time. I was surprised in doing some of the research in this area that uh, you've heard the expression perhaps GE sells, uh, they don't sell aircraft engines anymore, they sell power by the hour. Right. And it seems like a relevant, uh, a relatively recent innovation, but actually they've been talking about that since the 60s. So if you're going to deliver products that are a service that people are expecting certain levels of quality, support uh, over a long period of time, then you're going to need to have an understanding of how those things are actually working in the field, or more importantly, not working, so you can get uh, the old Maytag repairman out there. So this is this gives the manufacturers what just instant instant feedback on how a product is behaving in the field or how yeah, it's that, being that's used. One of the main, yeah, that's one of the main things that that people are looking for is to understand the behavior uh, and be able to do uh, predictive maintenance to figure out not when the thing is broken or when is it about to break. Uh, it, this is crucial in a lot of. Uh, consumer as well as industrial applications. Is, 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 it also, is, is it also giving them information on how the user is using the product rather than just maintenance, but are, are they gathering information on this, this is how the user is using my product in order to, I don't know, make future yep. enhancements, no, that sort of thing? That, that's the thing, all, all of the above. Once you put these cheap processors, memory and sensors on something, you can ask it just about anything. Uh, obviously, you have to plan for it, but you can ask it just about anything. So, performance monitoring is important. Usage uh, feedback is going to be crucial to help people improve their products. Right? If you can, if you can readily understand that you put a feature in that you slaved over that no one's using, then uh, that's going to be uh, very helpful when you come out with Rev two, Rev three, and Rev four. Well, let's 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 look at it from the other side. So, so the manufacturers are putting this in there in order to gain information for themselves. Uh, hopefully, it's, it's their their hope is that it's going to improve the product, maybe uh, help uh, create better products in the future. But what about for the consumer? What is in it for the consumer? Because I mean, we're going to talk about this a little bit. There's some security issues here. So I'm I'm letting sure. somebody basically into my home, into all of my appliances, mm -hmm. to send this data to some some manufacturer who knows where. What well, am I getting that? But, but there was also uh, Google bought a company called Nest uh, not that long ago. Uh, this was mentioned, I think, in, in the article. Um, and basically, Nest is a consumer product where everyone is controlling their home environment using their phones. So we've already experienced a lot of this stuff uh, through our mobile devices because mobile devices are essentially IoT nodes. So think about all the things that you can do with your smartphone and all the, the joy, pain, and other emotions you've suffered. Uh, as a result of it, um, you're going to be able to do all of those things with a lot more devices. Okay, well, let's let, let's talk about. I, I touched on this just a little bit. So, I mean, obviously, it has come up with the, the security issue has come up with you know smartphones and that sort of stuff. But I mean, I understand there's even some 
security concerns with your toaster, your refrigerator, your, your kind of your, your dumb internet connected device um, uh, that, that maybe we're going to find more and more scattered throughout our home. What are some of the security concerns and are manufacturers actually looking at these and addressing them? Well, obviously, you know, as we've seen with our phones uh, and with the social media applications, people are gathering lots of data on us and, and those type of privacy concerns are, I think, foremost. Um, at the, on the other side is actually more of a physical security or, or uh, network security where people are worried about uh, someone taking over the device and doing bad things with it, like sending spams from your refrigerator, for instance. That was in the news recently. So there's a number of different levels of security that, that need to be a concern, but in some ways we could be better off in this space because the technologies are newer. A lot of the security breaks that we, we hear about in infrastructure and other places that are also IoT or uh, very often called machine-to-machine -machine, uh, type applications where things are still running, you know, Windows NT or some old operating system that, that isn't potentially as secure. So with technology moving forward, I think we have more of an opportunity to maybe address some of those things. Stan, I, I, this kind of came to me as you, as you were talking, I wanted to jump here with a quick question about big data because, I mean, really, this is, this is a, a big data play in its purest form. I mean, you think about, as we talked about, all these billions of devices and, and trillions of sensors, it's, it's really mind-boggling. I mean, you know, you're a researcher, that's your background, I know, as a researcher, so, so how do you even contemplate all that data? I mean, how do you, how do you understand what within all that, those, those mountains of data are, are critical and, and, and what you can really use to leverage uh, you know, better work on behalf of the manufacturers and better service to a, to a customer? Well, that, that's going to be a huge problem. I mean, uh, uh, big data, even, even business intelligence isn't as broadly used as some people might like. And big data was there before we started talking about IoT, and the data volumes are just going to explode. So um, you're going to need different analysis techniques, different data storage techniques for the vast volumes. Um, as far as what, what you're going after, you know, that's one of my concerns. You said I'm a researcher. Actually, prior, uh, my training is in mathematics, and um, that's actually one of my concerns about all of the analytics that they're doing is because there's a lot of correlation that's going to be used. And anybody that st took statistics knows that correlation and causality are not the same thing. <laughs> so uh, a lot of advanced analytic techniques, you see a lot of spending by people like Oracle and IBM in this space. Uh, um, IBM just invested over a billion in Watson. They're going to use the Watson technology that you've seen on Jeopardy, among other places, uh, to help parse these vast volumes of data. Well, Stan, thanks, uh, thanks for giving us a little bit more information and background on the Internet of Things. This has been uh, Stan Presbolinski, uh, Vice President of Research with Sim Data. Stan, thanks for joining us on the show this morning. Thanks. Anytime, guys. Thanks for asking me. Sure. Thanks, Stan. Appreciate it. So Good. long. So long. Uh, good stuff there, Dirk. Yep. Uh, I think that, you know, as he, as he said, I mean, this is, this is the issue that's in front of us now is, yep. is, is this big data understanding. Uh, and, and, you know, what he mentioned there about correlation and causality, I mean, sure. it's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, it's something that's an, it's a fallacy that I think a lot of people, even, even people with a mathematics and statistical background sometimes trip over is, right. is this idea that, that you can find patterns, but maybe those patterns aren't truth. I mean, but what is truth? I don't know. I mean, right, it, right. It, there's a really, there's a lot of yeah. really interesting questions. And the more, more data there is out there, sometimes it's, it's harder to find uh, kind of causality yeah, for exactly. some of the patterns that you spot. We talked so. about it last week with the sensors of uh, to, to try to track uh, hospitals and people falling in hospitals. Right. You know, I mean, you, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to get false positives in anything right. with, with medical, but a false positive is better than a false negative, right? I mean, sure. Yeah, it's exactly. like, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. so it's, it, there's a lot of complicated issues uh, and, and involving data. It's going to just continue we'll, to get more. We'll be, we'll keep reporting on the yeah, internet of things. So, well, cool. All right.